Hello, today we're talking about data analysis for the Big Mac I. So from the main menu, I will enter the data analysis section and I'll select the database I want to view my data from. And now I have these filters in place at the top to select uh, for the data that I want to see. And so from the list here on the left, I can select the test series I want to see. And here the selections we have for the table are uh, the test report. Uh, the test report is where you can view one test series only. Um, so you can see here we have uh, all of the check zones for this test series as well as the uh, panel match. And we can see the DE values for each um, as well as the uh, delta sparkle values and the graininess values. Um, but if I click up here at the top, color components, I can also see the uh, delta LAB values as well. I can check sparkle components to add those. Here they are to the right. I can add the intensity emission, the temperature during measurement, uh, and the tolerances that were set for the standard. And if you have any questions about any of these values, um, please do reach out to your uh, Big Garden representative. Um, now we can see in the data table that some of these values are highlighted in different colors. Um, so over here, when we're looking at the delta E value, uh, these will be highlighted in uh, red, yellow, or nothing, depending on how uh, the data matches the traffic light uh, settings that we input uh, for the standard, and that has to do with the tolerances. So if the uh, delta E value is well within tolerance, um, there will be no highlighting. Uh, if it is um, within tolerance but close to the limit, it will be highlighted in yellow like you're seeing here. And if it is out of tolerance, it will be highlighted in red. And that's true for the L value as well. But now when we get over to the uh, A and B values, those are actually going to be highlighted. If they are out of tolerance, they will be highlighted in the um, direction in color space that they're off. So these uh, values here, these A values that are highlighted in red are actually uh, too red. Um, they're out of tolerance in the red direction. Uh, this value here is out of tolerance in the green direction for this panel match. And then for the B value, it will show you, um, it will highlight the values in, in yellow or blue, depending on the direction it's off. So these cells here, these values are uh, out of tolerance in the blue direction, and these yellow highlighted values are out of tolerance in the yellow direction. Now when we get over to the uh, delta sparkle, the gradient values, um, those again will be highlighted in red or yellow depending on the traffic light signal, um, which tells us whether they're out of tolerance or not. If you click schematic at the top, you can view the schematic that was used in the organizer for these measurements. And you can see each of the check zones in this schematic. Now here, and I'm gonna start that again. On. You can click schematic up top to view the schematic that was used in the organizer for these measurements and you can see each check zone here in the schematic and you can click on the different check zones to view the data in the table or you can view you can click the check zone in the table to see which check zone it corresponds to on the schematic uh, and if you don't like the view here you can move this back and forth to view more or less data you can also click this plus sign magnifying glass button here in the corner, and that will uh, bring it up to its own window. And now here in each check zone, you'll see these little dots, and the larger single dot is going to indicate the traffic light conditions of the uh, match to the standard, uh, which is of course determined by the tolerances for the standard. Now these double dots here, that indicates the panel match, the status of the panel match, uh, whether it's red for out of tolerance as this is, uh, or yellow meaning uh, intolerance, but close to the edge. Now if we click line graph or line up here, we can view our line graphs and I can click the plus sign again here to bring that up to its own window so it's easier to see. But I can also customize these graphs uh, with the 
uh, with only the data I want to see. So by default, uh, everything is shown. But if I go through and I select only a few of these scales, send them over with the arrow, they'll be shown here. And I can even uh, sort the position of these graphs the way I want to see them. Uh, and again, I can hit that plus sign to bring it up to its own window, so it's easier for me to see. If I click travel here at the top, I can view graphs that show me the change from angle to angle for each measurement. So here, each set of measurements, each uh, different color is a different angle. And so I can see how, for example, the L value is changing for a single check zone. And so the important thing here is not that the value is changing, that there is travel. It's that the travel is the same across each check zone. And to check for that, you want to make sure that each check zone has the same general shape um, for these, uh, these angles, for these travel graphs. Um, so, for example, here, if I look at the DA, um, now, first of all, I, I can see the check zones here up at the top, and I'm going to ignore the panel match uh, calculations over to the right because those are going to have a different uh, shape than our, our other check zones. And so I'm only focusing on the check zones over here to the left. Um, so you can see that, for example, these first four check zones for the delta A value, um, the travel is nearly identical between all of them. So those panels, those parts are going to look very good next to each other. Um, we see some differences here as we move to these check zones. The shape of this uh, travel line graph is, is changing somewhat. So this is going to look a little bit worse uh, starting out of tolerance and then going into tolerance where uh, these check zones to the left are in tolerance the whole time. Um, but if we look up here at, uh, for example, the um, delta L values, we can see that these are a bit worse because, for example, here on these check zones at the left, um, we're starting a bit too dark and ending a bit too light. Um, and then here in these check zones or this check zone here, we're going to start uh, right on target and then get to, uh, to a lighter space. And so um, that's not going to look so good on the car. You can click the scatter XY tab to view some graphs of your data. Uh, so here we have uh, graphs of our, our data points in LAB space for each measurement angle. So here I have the AB plane and uh, each check zone is plotted in this AB plane. And I can click on the check zone in the data table and it will highlight the appropriate point in red or circle it in red. I can also click on points in the graph and it will highlight the appropriate line in the uh, data table. So I have my AB here and I have my DL here and these uh, green and red circles and these green and red bars here indicate the tolerances. Um, so this is again according to both the tolerances and the traffic light settings. So anything that exists within this uh, green circle or between these green bars, uh, these points are well within tolerance. If it's between the green and the red, this would be considered the yellow section. So this is intolerance, um, but close to the edge of the tolerance and anything outside of the red would be out of tolerance. Now, in addition to graphs for color, we can also view graphs for our effect measurements, the sparkle and the graininess, which you can see down here. And I'll go ahead and expand this. Um, so here we can see uh, the sparkle intensity and sparkle area graphed for each check zone. And again, we have our green and red tolerance shapes. And then over here to the left, uh, we have our overall delta sparkle. And again, uh, we have our, our uh, red and green bar to tell us whether it's in or out of tolerance. And we have graphs for each uh, measurement angle for the sparkle as well as for the graininess. And now these uh, measurements, these effect measurements are very important because they can have a huge influence on the color as well. So we're working with BICMAC data and data analysis, and now we're in the scorecard section. 
And the scorecard uh, gives you a data table um, that is a pivot chart. So it's very, very customizable. So what we're seeing right here, uh, so I, I've selected my test series on the left that I want to see, and we're seeing this pivot chart according to these settings here. So I've got the scale in the columns. I've got the color in the rows, which means that uh, each of these values is being averaged for each color across all of these test series. Um, so what I can do, um, I can then uh, uh, change this pivot chart by dragging things um, either away or into these sections. So for example, I can split up this data by check zone by dragging this, uh, I'll place it in the rows column. And so now instead of just seeing an overall average for each color, um, which would be sort of uh, an executive report, um, now I'm, I'm drilling down and I'm seeing what the measurements are for each check zone. Uh, now the data you are seeing here, the delta SE, ET, the delta E values, this is, uh, these are the default values um, sort of, and I can also select uh, scale here. I can click on scale in order to uh, customize which scales are shown in this pivot chart. So suppose I only want to see delta SE, delta ET, send those over, click OK. And now those are all I'm seeing, or I can pick more scales if I want to see them. Uh, now you can also check these boxes along the top to add different scales. For example, the um, color components. Let me get rid of these. Um, and so now I'm seeing the color components at each angle, the LA and B values. I can check this to see the sparkling components, the intensity emission value, or the temperature. So you can govern uh, the scales in the pivot chart either by uh, these check boxes at the top or by clicking on scales and selecting your scales this way. So I'm still in scorecard and now I've selected box plot. Um, this is a little chaotic over here because it's showing me everything all at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select two check zones to compare. And then I'll go ahead and click the magnifying glass so I can see these charts larger. And so this is showing me the range of values across these test series for each check zone. Uh, and this allows me to compare neighboring uh, panels with each other to see um, how they're they're performing against each other. Here we are in the trend section, and I've of course filtered my data and selected the test series I want to see. Uh, now this um, section, this trend table is a pivot chart, just as with the scorecard section. So I have these uh, categories in my columns and rows section that this chart is going to be uh, organized by, and I can of course, modify this as I see fit. So currently we have in the rows, we have the data separated by color, and that means it's going to average each of these values um, across all check zones and all of the selected test series for each color. Um, but if I'd like to, for example, split that data up by check zone, I can drag check zone down here. And if I didn't want to see all the check zones, I could click here and I could select the ones I wanted to see. And now I can click uh, scale to select the scales I want to see in this graph. So the ones I'm seeing here, these are the default scales uh, when nothing is selected. But if there are specific scales I want to see, delta ET, delta SC, delta ST, I can send those over and click OK. And now that's what I'm going to see in my chart. Um, what you can also do is use the check boxes, if I clear this, I can use the check boxes at the top um, to decide what I want to see in this table just by clicking the color components. So those are going to show me the uh, LAB color values for each angle, the sparkle components, giving me the sparkle intensity and area for each measurement angle, uh, the intensity emission and temperature values. So you can, you can uh, select your scales using these boxes or with the, uh, the scales box here.
with trend selected, I can select line graphs and I can then uh, select uh, some entries in this data table to compare. So I'll select left fender and right fender. And so now I'm seeing the data for these two check zones uh, daily. So it's averaging the daily values for each of these check zones. Um, I can change this to uh, any of these other things that I want to. Um, I can change it to weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, I can see it uh, by check zone if I select check zone by timestamp. If I have a parameter five, um, that is a unique identifier, usually something like a serial number or a VIN number. So if you want to um, select a unique identifier, you can do that. Uh, we'll select check zone by timestamp. And now currently it's showing me all check zones um, across here undifferentiated. So if I want to compare these two check zones, I can click compare up here. And now I see each check zone has its own line graph and I have this key at the bottom. So the left fender is in blue, the right fender is in yellow, um, and I can easily compare uh, the values for these two um, check zones across time. I can also click on graph to select the scales I want to see and to organize the way I want to see them. So I can get rid of scales here by clicking this trash can symbol. I can add scales from the left by clicking on them and then hitting the arrow. And I can also rearrange uh, the order of these graphs by uh, just dragging and dropping them and I can uh, change the format. I can click on the travel tab to view the uh, color change from angle to angle. Um, so here I still have my check zones, left fender and right fender selected. I'll click the plus sign so I can view this larger. And so what this is showing me is for each check zone, it's showing how the, um, the values change from measurement angle to measurement angle. And of course I have my key here again, telling me that uh, the left fender is in blue and the right fender is in yellow and it's uh, each entry is on a different day. And so what I'm looking for here um, in the travel is uh, these um, curves, the travel curves um, should have generally the same shape from check zone to check zone, approximately the same shape. And that indicates that the travel um, from angle to angle is gonna be very similar and those panels should match each other fairly well. I can click the scatter XY tab to view graphs of my data in LAB space. So we'll expand this here. And so I have uh, for each check zone, I have um, the LAB data plotted um, here in this AB plane, as well as in this L graph uh, for the DL, DA, DB values. Now, any point that lies within this uh, red circle or within um, these red bars. These are the tolerance bars. So anything inside that is intolerance. Anything outside is out of tolerance. And so I can hover my mouse over different points to see uh, which check zones this, this was. And then down here, I also have the uh, sparkle data. Um, and again, I have my sparkle uh, tolerance here and anything inside this uh, red shape here is going to be intolerance and any points outside um, will be out of tolerance and same for this uh, delta sparkle graph here. <laughs>